Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Here we go today. I, I, I think I have something for a lot of people today. At least I hope I do. And this is about uh, on your journey. And this is about something that happens to us all. I mean, what happens to all of us from time to time when we get discouraged? What happens to all of us when we feel like quitting? What happens to all of us when we have that turn back moment? What happens to all of us when it don't seem like it's going to pan out? Because I want you to understand something that everyone, every single living soul has those thoughts about something at some point in their life. I mean, you know, look, I've oftentimes uh, been discouraged about things not happening as fast as I'd like them or things don't pan out the way I would like for them to have panned out. I mean, there's so many ways to get discouraged. But what, but what my encouragement to you is when discouragement comes is understand this. It is a part of the growth process. It is a test. It is a test of your faith. How bad you want it? Do you really believe? That's that's all faith is. It's simply, and I've said this how many times, faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. So when discouragement comes, setbacks comes, it is a test of your faith. At least it's been that way for me. Now, other people can explain it another way. I'm not other people. I can only give it to you the way it's come to me and throughout my life. And man, oh man, oh man, discouragement sometimes is tough to deal with. Because it seems at times when you are discouraged that is so absolute that this means the end. And if you allow it to set in, it can be just that, the end of you. When merely, merely it was a test. That's all it is. But the majority of people that I know who are not successful or who have told me the story of how they gave up, it was, was because at a moment of discouragement that they allowed it to set in and it became so in engulfing that it became the reason why you shouldn't finish. And then they started justifying it with, hit the one that I hate to hear. Well, if, it, if it's God's will, excuse me, if it's God's will that you fail, if it's God's will that you're not successful, if it's God's will that you lay down and give up, it's God's will that you allow yourself to amount to not to not reach your pit, uh, potential. That's God's will. That's not the God I know. That's not the God I serve. That's not the God I've read about. That's not the God I believe in. I'm sorry. I just, my mother always taught me something that he didn't bring me this far to leave me. I just don't believe that. Not for a second. Now, have I convinced myself of some things? Yep. Have I allowed the devil to come into the picture and paint a different one for me? Yep. Yep. I've done all of that. But you can't blame that on God now. Come on. So when, when discouragement comes, try to look at it, if you can, as a test of your faith. And you merely have to pass the test. It could be for a day, a half a day, a few hours, a week, a few weeks. It don't matter. Don't nobody know how long the test period is. Your job is to keep the faith and keep moving. Keep the faith and keep moving. Keep working. Keep believing. Keep hope alive. That's your job. If you do that, that's how you pass the test. It could be over tomorrow. It could be over in two weeks. It could be over in a month. You don't know. But all you got to do is wake up and keep the faith 
and fight the discouraging feelings. And how do you do that, Steve? Now, nah, here we go. This is the part I know about for sure. Because how many times I've had to fight off discouragement in order to get to where God wanted me to be. What do you do when you become discouraged? Well, I think of the outcome. When I get discouraged about a task, I think about the outcome. Man, what would it be like if I were to complete the task? What would it be like, man? What would the outcome be for me if I hung on in there? If I didn't give up, if I, if, if I, if I imagine, I imagine if I don't quit, I imagine if I don't give up, what would it be like? Man, suppose everything I'm hoping for comes true. But if I don't quit and give up, that might just be the case. I start talking to myself like that. I think of what the upside is. What's the upside to staying with it? You see, all this is the same thing. I'm just giving you different ways to look at it. I'm saying the exact same thing over and over, but I'm just trying to find a switch that connects in your mind where you can say, okay, man, I'm going to hang in there. Because if you think of the outcome and the outcome is appealing to you, if you imagine what it would be like if you don't give up or you don't quit, if you, if, if you think only of what the upside is to staying with it, and then I, 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 I go, where can this lead to? If I stay with it, man, and the outcome comes true, where else could that lead me to? Because, I mean, there's always more to it. So where, where else could this lead me to? What are the possibilities, man? What are the limitless possibilities? What could God possibly have in store for me if I just hang in there, if I pass this test of faith? If I just pass this test, now it ain't going to be the only one, but you got to get past this one, though. Then you're going to hit a smooth plane. Then it's going to be another one. It's going to be another one. Life ain't nothing but a series of tests, man. Man, when you're thinking about giving up, when you're discouraged, think of the outcome. Imagine what it would be like if you don't quit, if you don't give up. What's the upside to staying with it? Where can this all lead to? What what can this get you to? If the, if you do this and you get to where you think you want to be, oh my God, what's after that? What are the limitless and endless possibilities of holding on to your faith? What could really be out there for me, man, if I just pass this test? You got to talk yourself into hanging in there. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It has begun. The Steve Harvey Morning Show live on your radio, on your app, on your computer, in your house, on your elevator, in your job, on your car, on your wide to work, on the way home, whatever it is you got going on, we own the radio. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., better known as Keir Spates, or Keir Spates, better known as Junior, and the legend that is Nephew Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. Junior! Yes, sir. What's on your mind? You know what, Unc, man? Let me just ask you this, Unc, because, you know, you, you, you're very different. You know, you got a lot of stuff that you don't like. Like, uh-huh. you know, like, like you, like, what type of people do you like talking to? Because if you got an illness, you, can, you don't like talking to them. Okay. If, no, I don't, if, I don't if you like got, talking if you to got sick phys- people. Yeah, if you got if you got physical features that's wrong, you don't like talking to them. You know, if you if you you know talk and you can't talk right, I don't want to talk yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> who do you want to talk to? If you really unattractive, but thank you, cute. I don't yeah. care for you. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Know your space. Know Reside your space. in your space and be comfortable with it. All of my friends are unattractive, yeah. as am I. And yeah. we know that and just go on and have a conversation. Don't be standing over there pulling on your shirt, trying to straighten yourself out and all this here, <laughs> licking yeah. your eyebrows and all this here. You ain't <laughs> finna be cute. <laughs> okay. So there's some people I don't care for. You know, I don't like, you know, short people up on me close talking. You know, back up so I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you all up under my arm phone talking. I what? can't hear you. Back up, man. 
<laughs> too short to be up under me like that. Go Steve. get close to me and want to talk. All <laughs> soft. You all talking into my chest and everything. Back up, man. <laughs> That's the way to kick you off know, Friday. And, other, and, and, you know, and know your breath. Know it. <laughs> you heard this know before. Your know it. If and you heard it. your breath is strong today, uh, assume that this could be the day too. <laughs> Adjust. <laughs> if you, if somebody ever said, hey, man, you need some mints. Like I've been told, hey, Harv, you need some mints. Cool. Then I'm assuming uh-huh. every day it could be a mint day. <laughs> and I go at it like that. Don't you don't count on me talking about Never you ain't got the net. time to figure out what day is your day. Every yeah. day is your day. <laughs> Talk accordingly. Come on. If Come you on. wear glasses, put yeah. them on all that squinting. I don't like talking <laughs> to people when they squint. <laughs> Put your glasses on with your blind ass. Sitting up in here, man, now I got to back up and hold the paper way away from me so you can see it. All this here. What does that your shirt say? Nike. It say Nike, man. What the hell did you thought it was saying? Why would I put that on my damn shirt? Oh, I thought it was the N-word. Why would I put that on my shirt? Where's your glasses? Nike. Oh the damn goodness. shirt say Nike. Ah. Ah. Show okay. damn glasses on. Dim the people I don't like talk to, Junior. <laughs> Hope that answers your question, Junior. Oh, Thank you. Coming up <laughs> at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Deborah K. Deborah K. This goes out to all the hairstylists. Out there. Matter of fact, hairstylists and beauticians. Beauticians, all right? If you under 25, you might not know what beautician is, okay? (laughs) My mama went to a beautician. You understand? That's something different, okay? That's a wash and sit. A wash and sit. That's what you get at the beautician. (laughs) Let's go, cat dog. This right here. Hey, Tommy. Mine went to the hairdresser. Hair yeah. See, that's All before right. we got to beauticians. Mm-hmm. The hairdresser. Hello? May I speak to This Let me tell you something to you. My name is Wayne. You did my auntie's hair yesterday. And now, I don't know what you did. I don't know what kind of glue you'd use with weaves uh, or whatever. But my auntie had and fell out in church today. Well, doing- well I, don't, I don't even use glue. Because I don't even know why you coming at me on the side tip anyway about your auntie. My Who auntie. Is your auntie? My auntie is Deborah, and I have fell out. I don't know no Deborah. I don't do no Deborah hair. Yeah. You talking about how you use glue? I don't use glue. I've been sewing that hair since, since 1982. You come coming at me with some glue? I don't do no glue. Who, who you think you tripping with? Look, let me I'm tell you. With you. You coming at me on some side? I don't do no Deborah. I don't even know no Deborah. Look, let me say this to you. All I'm saying is. You gotta say say what you gotta say, cause I, I'm I'm serious about my hair weed. You coming at me with some glue? It's too hot for some glue. That be that melting on the side of your head. Well, that's what happened, and I have fell off in service, and all the church members is sitting there laughing at her. Well, she shouldn't have been. Maybe she's trying to get the devil out of her, cause she ain't had no business shouting that damn hard anyway. But I don't. With no glue. You ain't finna sit here and talk about my Amy and her Jesus. Don't you talk about how she shot. Amy, I don't even know this lady. I don't Miss, even know that. The, the, are you talking about glue? I don't do glue. They call her Miss Deborah. I don't know no Miss Deborah. She just got her hair done from you yesterday. How you gonna sit here and act like you ain't cut it yesterday? I, I didn't cut it. Yeah, you just said glue. Tell Deborah to call me that. Tell her to be a real woman and call me and tell me the I'm I'm finna tell everybody in Atlanta, Georgia, not to come to your house. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait one minute. You wait one minute. That's my livelihood, you with. Now I'm gonna need you. Who the is this? Who are you? My name is Wayne. I don't know no Wayne. Look here, Wayne. I know you don't know Wayne, but you you know. I tell you, I got a brother named Big J and Leroy. Bring your Wayne. Bring your. Bring your swing. Look, look, let me tell you something. I don't want no problem, but I will throw these hands if I got to. What? Big J number throw them hands on. Look here, look here. I ain't got time to tell your auntie whoever the made the mistake and wasn't me. Now, look, you done got me out here on Good Sunday. I just came from church. It's hot as hell. And you telling me about some glue? You ain't got no, you ain't got you today, do you? You I ain't got nothing to do. 
I got to find out why my ain't in half falling out in church. Well, it ain't me, so call somebody else in Atlanta. Because, hey, I'm the I am the been the since 82. But, but well, you ain't, you you must not be it right now if you got people half falling out in church and glue falling all off on the pew. Don't go, hey, yo, ain't it probably glued her own in. That's probably why it fell out. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm the hottest stylist in Atlanta. So, I don't know who no that, but she ain't nobody. If I, if, hey, I ain't do a half. I don't up half. You can call any and everybody in Atlanta. They'll tell you the same thing. Look. All I'm saying is, you done messed up my ain't hair. I want to get it rectified. I need you, first of all, to call and apologize to her. Apologize? Uh, Have you got a low show? You been drinking on some Jesus juice with your ain't That's why I have that lot. You and Michael Jackson and your ain't Deborah Cece or whatever her name is. Uh, look, let me tell you. First of all, you're going you to respect my ain't Okay, uh, whatever you say her name is, I I want you to redo my ain't hair for free and give her her money back from the first time she paid you. I don't know who this, hold, hold on. I don't know who this, I, who, I don't know who you are. I'm Wayne. Why are you coming? To, Wayne, look here, Wayne. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hang up in your face. No, Wayne. hold up. I'm Deborah <laughs> nephew, Wayne. Nah, my ain't 52 years old. Now, if you ain't going to respect your elders, how you expect to be blessed? You say you just went to church this morning. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You calling me on Sunday with some <laughs> got me cussing like this. See, now I got to go back in and have a conference with my pastor behind some <laughs> I got one more thing I need to say to you before I get off the phone. What, what, well, say what the you got to say, because you wasted my minutes. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just oh. got pranked from your girlfriend. <laughs> oh, Lord. That I'm about to have my brothers come whoop your That got me. That got me. Nephew What's up, man? <laughs> they tell, your, your girl told me, she said, trust me, going off the oh, first 12 seconds. Oh, it's she know. <laughs> <laughs> she know what it is, nephew, Tammy. Uh, Tammy. Hey, hey, baby, let me ask you. You don't do no, uh, you don't do no glue? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> no glue. I don't, I don't, hey, hey I can tell you, I don't no glue. It's, it's too, too hot. It's too hot for glue. It's too hot for the glue. <laughs> All right, baby. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody half fell out of church that you still. They say you the bomb down there, so I just wanted to call and make sure I <laughs> prank my girl. <laughs> she the one. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> up on sight. <laughs> on sight. <laughs> All right, baby. Answer one thing for me. What is the baddest? I mean, the baddest radio show in the world. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I don't use no glue. <laughs> she was hot. serious. It's too hot. You no good. Make me call my brother Big Jake and Leroy on you. I don't know who you think okay. you're talking to. Coming at me sideways like this. I don't even know no damn Deborah K. Okay. Uh, <laughs> use no glue. It's too hot to be using some damn glue. I don't use no glue. I'm the blank. I've been the blank since 80, 82, 86, whatever she is. Uh -huh. <laughs> 82. Love her. Love it. Love her. Ignorance at its best, y'all. There it is. That's to run that prank back of the day, y'all. All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with the one and only Steve Harvey right here, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Carla has some music news for us on the Notorious B.I.G. And a first date goes very wrong when the female is told to walk home. Wow. Right what? now, it is time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get into that. Don't worry about it. We'll get into it. Yes. <laughs> right now, it is time for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey, right here, right now. All right. Gina in Macon says, I met a great man online, and he thinks cooking at home is a good date. He cooked, then I cooked, then his mama cooked, and then his sister cooked. I'm sick of going to his family's house or any house to eat. Will it be a turnoff if I tell him that? Well, I mean, it's the truth. Tell him, don't do not do it like that. Don't, don't register a complaint against his family. Just put out the wish that you want. Just simply say, you know what? I really appreciate your family and I enjoy being around and in the cooking. But if I would love for you to take me out to dinner at least once a week. 
you know, I don't mind going over to people's houses, but if you could take me out, you know, I just want to be out sometimes and socialize. I like to sit a nice sit down restaurant. I like service. Would you do that for me, please? Bam, you have dinner once a week. And then his feelings ain't hurt by his mama because you hurt a man feeling about his mama, your relationship ain't going to last long. Hey, mama, she said food. she don't want to come over here and just all this eating, you know. She don't like coming over here. Oh, so when she don't like eating. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to date a heifer that don't like to eat and we eat people. <laughs> <laughs> we're eat people all right <laughs> moving on to uh, brooke and gary brooke writes i'm 30 i'm a 30 year old single woman and my married father is having an affair with a married woman i'm sleeping with that married woman's husband nobody knows what's up but me i'm about to end the affair with this guy because it's too much for me to handle should i go out with a bang and expose everyone no wow. <laughs> no no. No. Why would you do that? Yeah. Go out with the bang and expose everyone. Why? What's What's the purpose in that? People are imperfect. You included. Mm-hmm. You made a mistake. Now, if you want to correct your mistake, go on and correct your mistake. That's all. Well, who are you? You know, people, you know, it kills me when people decide to be judge and jury after they decide right. to get they self right. Uh-huh. Then they want to be judge and jury on everybody else. But thinking this. You single, she's seeing a married man. Her daddy, who is married, is seeing the married man's wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, and problem? (laughs) Well, those are all sorts of problems, but don't create more. But look, I mean, everybody in this, you dating a married man, your daddy dating a married woman, he already married, the married woman is dating a married man. Everybody, all this is consensual. Um, Who happens to be dating you, Bruce? And apparently this ain't your mama that the daddy with. So No. Right? Uh-huh. This 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 your, this this is a whole nother woman. This ain't your mama at all. No. Mm-mm. And I got news for you. You might not know what your mama doing. Oh. Mm. Mm. Hello. Okay. Okay. Mm. Cause let me tell you something about women. They not stupid. No. <laughs> What's good for the goose stuff. is good for the gander. Remember that? Next question, sure. Sure. With the bang. Here we go. Mm. Unique in Kansas City, Missouri. It says, I was stuck in the back of my man's SUV for an hour after his girlfriend pulled up next to us. We were about to have sex, and he jumped out, and I jumped in the back. He went to go eat with her, her but I didn't know, so I stayed hidden. He has told me he's sorry a million times. Should I give him a second chance? <laughs> what? Shirley, she went to dinner um, with her boyfriend. Okay, <clears throat> she was. She and her man were in the in her man's SUV. Okay, uh-huh. so she was stuck in the back of her man's SUV for an hour after his girlfriend pulled up next to them. Okay, they were about to have sex. He jumped out. She jumped in the back. He went to go eat with his girlfriend who pulled up next to them. So the woman he was about to have sex with in the truck jumped in the back, and she was in there for well, an hour. Well, clearly, <laughs> should you give him another chance, what? clearly you're not the girlfriend. No. He ain't can you know man. where. You the in the truck chick. Uh-huh. <laughs> Matter of fact, he done got out the truck to go to lunch with yes. his girl. Mm-hmm. How much lower on the totem pole do you right. want to position yes. yourself? How about right. respect that part? Should I give him another chance? A chance to do what? To tell you you ain't nobody? Right. Right. To get in the truck again? What? what? He stuck <laughs> back there for Girl, an hour. He, he almost <laughs> gave it to me in that truck. Yeah. Yeah. You Not ain't even worth man. a room. Mm-hmm. Right. Girl, right. get yourself home. some standards. Should I give him another chance to tell you that you ain't the one? To Ooh. tell you you have no value. And he's it's too hot for that to be sitting in that truck that long. Too. That's a long <laughs> time. Yeah. And your stupid ass stayed in the truck. <laughs> right. Sat in the truck. In there. What is sat that? there? Like if she had a uh, I ain't finna be back here in no truck now. <laughs> Hello. Open, open the Are door. Are you gonna get introduce out. me? Yeah. And most Excuse me, ma'am. I was I'm with him. What is your name? Tina? 
<laughs> Hi, I'm Keisha. Hi, hello. <laughs> he lucky you didn't do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. Get it together, Unique. Moving on to Tracy in Norfolk. Tracy says, my husband and I played a drinking game with other couples, and I found out that he had had a threesome, and he's tried cocaine before. <laughs> wow. We've been together for five years, and this has never come up. He keeps saying he was just trying to be a good sport, and it's not true. How can I get the truth without nagging? Well, Whoa. you know, what, are you kidding me? <laughs> Y'all no. was playing a drinking game. He obviously done had to drink and then tell some stuff. He done told you try cocaine, and he done had a threesome. You want some more truth from him? Yeah. <laughs> All that well, probably happened on the little, same night. Listen to me, little girl. You probably need to cut your losses right here before you find yeah. out something you Let it go, Steve. Before he mess around and tell you who, the, who what, the, what the three people was. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've been together for five years, and she said it just never came up. <laughs> yeah. You can't tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> we say it all the time. We say it all the time. All right. Well, that's the last one, Steve. Wow. Put the baby powder. Well, I know they put that baby powder. <laughs> Does she need to know the truth? <laughs> no. See, that's why I, I tell y'all all the time. Mm -hmm. This is why you have to lie. You go in there telling the truth. Now, now here we are. We a damn strawberry letter. All this truth telling. Now she done wrote in on the show and all this here. All you had to do was lie. I've never been with three people. I've never tried any drugs. That's all right. you had to do. Simple. We right, right back to this happy five-year relationship. You ain't been <laughs> telling the damn truth with your dumb uh, ass. All right, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we're going to start it off with Carla and music news coming in. Hot Carla, what you got? All right, thank you, Shirley Girl. The Notorious B.I.G. will be honored this weekend in New York City on what would have been his 50th birthday. The Empire State Building will turn red over the weekend and have a digital crown spinning in its mast. You know, the long pole thing. Mm. Anyway, New York City, uh, the landmark will also host a ceremony for Biggie's friends and family in partnership with Bad Boy, Atlantic Records, and uh, in his home borough of Brooklyn. Brooklyn in the house. The Barclays Center will show a Biggie video on loop above the arena's entrance, and Amazon has partnered with Beautify Earth to install Biggie's, uh, they have uh, murals all over the five cities in the boroughs. So that's gonna be nice, wow. nice Biggie tribute, what a tribute this weekend. Yes, on what would have been Biggie's 50th birthday. Love me some Biggie, that's nice. And that's music Ooh, news, Big Apple, Brooklyn. Biggie. <laughs> Well, All right, Carla, thank well, you. Well, well, thank you. That's yeah. a great tribute. Well, it is graduation season, and uh, Tommy, your beautiful daughter, your uh, smart, your genius daughter, Sydney, <sighs> is graduating this weekend from high school. Congratulations. She's thank headed to Texas A&M, a Texas a right? That's right. Uh, that's right. Papa. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's Papa your alma mater. Yeah, your your mm -hmm. uh, wife's alma mater. So how are you feeling right now? Tell us about it. What's going on with you? Uh, I'm feeling a little, I mean, I'm excited that she's graduating. I mean, you know, you, you, you look uh -huh. forward to this as a parent, but I think it's just a whole leaving home and my, it's my baby girl, my only daughter. So yeah. I'm a little concerned. So uh, I'm, daddy going to be doing a little popping up at Texas A&M. That's going to happen for sure. I'm just going <laughs> to pop my ass up. Don't nobody want to daddy popping up at I know you don't. I know that ain't what you want. I know what you want. But why am I thinking bad boys right now? <laughs> <laughs> the Who movie. is you? Uh huh? <laughs> Name what? <laughs> but tell so, me yeah. you don't embarrass your baby. <laughs> I'm not. I don't want to embarrass, her, but I'm. I'm. I. You know. I'm. A, I'm a real father, man. Ain't nothing happen to my little girl. Not if I can hold it. Not if I can do something about it. So, mm -hmm. but I gotta trust her. You yes. know, I gotta trust yeah. her that that we've instilled everything in her that she needs to go off and be a lady. Mm -hmm. So I gotta. I got to do that, but uh, 
I'm, I'm trusting her, but I'm still popping the hell up too. Hey, I, I'm sorry, I'm popping up. <laughs> I, I'm doing both of them. I'm well, trusting you, but I, I don't trust everybody else. Put it that way. I trust you. I don't trust everybody else. There Sydney, you your daddy here. What is that? <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Congratulations, Sydney. In uh, other graduation news, the graduating class of Clark Atlanta University got more than their diplomas. They got brand new businesses. Commencement speaker Alicia Pinky Cole. We know Alicia Pinky Cole. She is the founder yeah. of Atlanta's super famous restaurant, Slutty Vegan. And uh, she announced that she's partnered with Vero Bank to provide every single graduate in that audience with a brand new LLC and a path to entrepreneurship. Every single graduate in this audience will leave this stadium as a business owner. Now that's yes. giving wow. back right wow. there. That is giving yes. back. That's Thank you, Pinky big. Cole. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. What a graduation gift! I Woo! know to nice. every student. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Now you got to do something about it. You know, you get this gift, this blessing. You got to do something about it. I try to tell college students when I meet with them, you've mm -hmm. made a major accomplishment. It's a huge thing to get a college degree. I, for one, I don't know how you do it. So congratulations, you've accomplished something that's a major milestone in your life. Now that you've done that, what you now have is a piece of paper that will hang on your wall as decoration unless you do something about it. Mm -hmm. And when that's what starts. you got to get the business on now. The, you, you, yeah. I hate to tell you this, but you've accomplished the easy part. <laughs> as hard as college was, that's wow. the easy part. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. What's in front of you is daunting. Get ready. All right. Thank you for that, Steve. Well, this next story is an awful story for single women. Um. A woman on TikTok shared a video of her date telling her to either walk home or go back to his place. In the viral video, the female is sitting at the table on a first date with this guy. And after she rejected his invitation to go back to his apartment, he suggested that she start walking home. Take a listen. So you're just going to sit on your phone? Yeah, are you going to get up and start walking? Why do I have to walk? Like, I mean, you look close enough to walk. So. But you drove me here, so I don't get why I'm walking home all the time. Like, I don't get that. That doesn't make sense to me. I mean, you know, you don't want to come back to my place, so there's no point in me not wasting gas. You can walk from here. So, I mean, I feel like I don't want to go to your place because I don't know you well enough. And it's just like our first time meeting. Like, does that not make sense to you? I don't get it. I mean, we spent the whole day together. I'm obviously attracted to you. You know, I don't see what the issue is. You can either come back to my place or what? Punk ass. Wow. Man. That's wow. why I'm going up at the A&M right there. It's just the way a lot of these young men are raised and bought up. And, uh, I mean, the young lady handled it. I wish she'd have just got out the car. Yeah. And went yeah. right back in that restaurant and called yourself an Uber or called somebody you yeah. know. Going and sat down and, and just yeah. got your done. You ain't got to go back and forth with this dude yeah. right here. Nope. I just feel yeah. like I spent a whole day with you and obviously I'm attracted to you. This is awful. Man. She also gave him money for gas. She and paid for both of their what? meals. Man. It's her yeah. gas? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. All right. Uh, listen, coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we're going to switch gears. And uh, our special guest will be the most notable civil rights attorney of our time, Benjamin Crump, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, you all, as promised, we've got our special guest. Uh, he is the trial lawyer of our time. Uh, he's been on the front lines of some of the most notable cases of civil rights injustices. He's joining us today to discuss the racially motivated mass murder that occurred in Buffalo, New York. Please welcome to the show, everybody, our brother, Attorney Benjamin Crump. Welcome, welcome, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Steve and everybody. It's such an honor to be here with you all to talk about this just incredibly important matter. Hey, Attorney Crump, let's do that. What is this exactly, man? What are we labeling this as? What, what, how do you see it? You know, see, it is not even debatable in my mind. This is domestic terrorism. And anybody else who tries to call it anything else 
is being disingenuous. You know, they call the Oklahoma City bombings domestic terrorism. They call the Parkland shooting domestic terrorism. And so when it's black people who are targeted by young, depraved, sick, racist, 18-year-old white supremacist in a grocery store that he says in his manifesto, uh, my objective is to kill as many black people as I can, that fits the very definition of domestic terrorism. And I quote Steve, domestic terrorism or homegrown terrorism is a form of terrorism in which victims within a country are targeted by a perpetrator with the same citizenship as the victims. Domestic terrorism is violent criminal acts committed by individuals and or groups to further an ideological goal stemming from domestic influences. Attorney Crump, it seems to me as though in this country, we have more documented acts of domestic terrorism than we do terrorism from outside the country lines. Absolutely. The director of the FBI said the greatest threat to American society right now is white supremacy. And so we have to deal with not just the sick individual who did this hateful act, but Steve Harper, we also have to deal with the root of the hate. And that is these individuals who are inspiring these young, insecure white boys to go out and commit senseless acts of violence by coming up with these crazy notions like race replacement theory that you should feel fear because you're being replaced and you got to do something about it. And it's irresponsible and it's dangerous. Yeah. Hey, uh, Tony Crump, hold on right there, because when we come back, we want to talk about those two things right there. We'll be back with more Attorney Benjamin Crump right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, we're back, and our special guest this morning is Attorney Benjamin Crump, and we're dealing with, uh, we're talking about this act of domestic terrorism that was perpetrated by this 18-year-old white supremacist in uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, I wanted to ask you a couple of things, and we want to talk about the family of Ruth Whitfield in a minute, which you're representing. Uh, we were talking about race replacement. I want to ask you a question. I'm really, I've been watching Fox News, and I, I can honestly say at this point that I actually miss Bill O'Reilly, because Bill O'Reilly and Ben Gleck, uh, Glenn Beck actually had some line that they drew in the sign. You know, every now and then, you know, Bill Riley would call out wrong on the right side. Uh This guy, I mean, Hannity, but Tucker Carlson is at a level that I've never seen on a TV anchor person in my life. His comments about this 18-year-old white supremacist have been just, I mean, this this guy is ridiculous, man. Uh, Do you have any thoughts on, on, on the views that they take? Well, Steve Harvey, you know, it's thought-provoking, mind-boggling. It used to be these crazy theories were just on the fringe of the far right. But now they are making it acceptable in mainstream society to say those things that inspire these young people. And you have it from the cable news uh, provocateurs. You have it from these conservative politicians who are trying to help build and expand their base and they're doing it at the expense of knowing that real people are going to get killed and mass shootings are going to happen based on what they're saying we must remember that the jewish temples in new york that young white supremacist said very similar things to what this young white supremacist said about Buffalo, New York shooting, when he talked about in that manifesto that if white people don't do something now, they gonna take over our country as if we are not Americans. And that is what they push on Fox, that there are some people who are more fit to be American citizens 
than exactly. others. Exactly. And, exactly. and see, I, I just, you know, they're saying that you and I and our children, we are not as appropriate to be American citizens. When you think about everything black people have done for America, we built this joint for free. And they still try to Come say on, they, they are more appropriate to be recognized as American citizens than us. That's what we have to call out. That is the root of the hate playing on this fear and insecurity. And if we don't address that, it's not enough just to hold accountable this uh, little racist white boy. We have to deal with those journalists who got audience of millions that they are radicalizing every day. I mean, they're radicalizing them, Steve. Uh, yeah. Just like Ben Lawton radicalized young people in their native land to go do uh, crazy senseless acts of violence. Well, that's what they're doing here with these young white boys. And we have to call it out. We can't call what they do evil and this here is less evil. No, when you go into a church in South Carolina and you kill nine of the most innocent people, you come to Buffalo, you kill ten of the most innocent people, well, how is that any different what they're doing and they accuse Ben Lawton of? That's all we're saying. We got to call hate, hate, and domestic terrorism, domestic terrorism. And when they try to say, well, we just call crime, crime when it's Buffalo, but then in Parkland, it's domestic terrorism. It's the worst thing we've ever seen. Well, it's the worst thing that black people ever seen, too, when you kill us. And we keep seeing it over and over and over. Hey, hang on one more time for me, uh, Attorney Crump. I, I want to ask you a couple of more questions uh, when we come back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Uh, we're back, everybody. We've got our special guest, Attorney Benjamin Crump, on the phone. And he's uh, on here talking about the tragedy that occurred in Buffalo. Uh, I wanted to ask you something because you're representing the family of Ruth Whitfield. Uh, the 86-year-old woman who was amongst those killed in the two-minute attack. Uh, how did this come about, uh, Attorney Crump? Yeah, you know, Steve, oftentimes when things happen to people, especially marginalized people of color, they don't know what to do. It is utterly shocking. And so they reach out to us because they trust my law firm to help fight for them. And they understand that, you know, there are no guarantees, but they want somebody to at least fight for them. And, you know, Steve, I, you, the reason I love you so much, brother, you say what you mean and you mean what you say. And I try to emulate that. So I, I'm honest with Ruth with the, with Phil's family that we're going to sue these gun manufacturers. We're going to sue these gun distributors. We're going to try to hold accountable anybody who might have had anything to do with this young 18-year-old white supremacist killing their mother, even his parents who bought them guns, the person who sold this 18-year-old boy an AR-15 that can shoot 70 rounds in less than 20 seconds. What do you sell an 18-year-old a gun like that for? What do you think they're going to do with it? Wow. So we're dealing with all these issues, Steve, because Ruth Whitfield was an angel. I mean, everybody in the family, everybody in the community, her son was the first black fire commissioner for the city of Buffalo, New York. And he talks about how his mother every day went to the nursing home to be able to just take care of her, the love of her life, who she had been married to. Get this, Steve Harvey. She had been married to him for 68 years. And they don't even know how they're going to tell their father, Gardner Whitfield Sr., that the love of his life was mm -hmm. killed by a sick individual of uh, committing an act of hate. And so when we think about this great uh, testament of love for 68 years who blessed this earth, we won't let her legacy be defined by this hateful act. But as her children and grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren say, they're going to make sure that there's some positive change out of this tragedy. And yeah. that will be the legacy befitting 
such an angel as Ruth Whitfield. Well, uh, Attorney Crump, I tell you what, we're going to be watching this closely. Uh, you know you have our support here on the radio show for anything messaging we need to get out. Uh, I wish you well with this case. I wish there is truly a way, even though, like you say, there are no guarantees, that we can hold people accountable uh, all the way back to his parents who bought him, the people who sold it to him. Uh, that That's going to be a heck of a dog fight. Uh, but you the man for it, man, and we appreciate all you do in terms of civil rights in this country. Uh, if it weren't for you, man, I don't know who we'd have uh, stepping up in the forefront and making a stand for us on these very, very still important issues that just keep plaguing our community, man. We're, and we're sick of it. We're exactly sick of it. And so, hey, man, let's get together with our forces and see what we can do about some of these people who are uh, taking our airwaves and spewing this type of hatred to perpetrate and build up and lift up people like this. So, Attorney Crump, as always, brother, thank you uh, for coming on. You're always welcome. Uh, our prayers go out to all the families in uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, we're on up there, man. We think about y'all daily, and we are with you, and you have our undying support. Uh, Attorney Crump, we love you, hey. bro. Love you too, Steve, and also we represent Andre McNeil's family and uh, Geraldine Talley family. We want to lift them up as well. Okay, good, good. I'm glad you said that. Thank you, brother. Be well. Hey, love you, frat. All right, boy. Wow. See, that's uh, that's the part, man. That we've, you know, when he said go after the, all these people, that's the key. But we got to get it past. You know, some of these judges and stuff. We got to get it past them. And that's the dog fight that we got to make because we're not going to get them to change the Second Amendment. That's not going to happen. And we're not going to stop the NRA from donating more money than anybody to the conservative Republican movement who supports the Second Amendment. So we got to find another way. If we could just get one judge, one judge somewhere to say, hey, you know what? The parents never should have. But this Rittenhouse case, that, his mama drove him up I there to kill him. Right. Yeah. How her yeah. ass ain't in jail is beyond me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, well, but we got to. He's, he's not in jail. Yeah, he's, he's not, not in jail. So. <laughs> he uh, ain't you, you know, that, 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 that right there, and Tucker Carlson put the money behind his defense. That's what I'm talking about. That's dangerous, man. When you use a platform like we have, Mm -hmm. to support murder, crime, mm -hmm. acts of violence, and racism. When you use this platform to support that. Domestic terrorism. That's an all-time mm -hmm. low. When you're using mm -hmm. your Bruh. platform for that, mm -hmm. you're Bruh. at an all-time low. For ratings, for yeah. viewers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and like, you know, Attorney Crump said, the FBI says that the number one problem facing America today is white supremacist. That's the FBI. Right. That ain't a black organization. That ain't Black Lives Matter. That's FBI. Straight. And we're targeted the most there. of all the races. It's always America. us. Yeah, and it's, it's always, always some white group that don't like the other group. Right. When, when people right. go understand what white supremacy really is, it's mm -hmm. always a white somewhere that don't like somebody else because they ain't white. Mm -hmm. What? Damn, what we got to do, man? Why, why we got to keep, man, see. All of our lives, all of our parents' lives, all of our grandparents, it's the same thing. It's just, I, I mean, when does when is it going to end is the question. And like Attorney Crump said, we built this nation. Mm -hmm. For free. Yeah. Yeah. We built this nation, man. This ours. Mm -hmm. This ours, this but ain't y'all's. But we're not Americans. <laughs> We're not considered Americans. Man. Who's more American than that? We built it. We built yes. America. <laughs> it's the oh, right. We're grieving all over again. Here we yeah. are. Here we are again. Every we can't go a quarter without yeah. something happening. It's almost like, oh, wait, 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 man. Are they starting to be okay? Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, no, they yeah. not. Six they weeks. comfortable. Man, we gotta do something. They must think this their country. Uh, who down there? Ain't we got a white boy somewhere that don't like him? 
and 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 then and, and and then here it come and we just dealing with this man I, i'm exa- i'm 65 years old i'm exhausted i've never known nothing else but this my entire life yeah. i've never in 65 right. years been able to take a, a deep ass breath and it started since i was a kid man mm-hmm. When the teacher made us watch in elementary school Martin Luther King's funeral on TV. I was sitting there going, and my father said it, man. That's when I knew something was wrong. My father said when he was watching the funeral, he was Mm -hmm. crying. My daddy said, white folks don't want us to have nothing. Mm -hmm. We can't even have Martin Luther King. How do we shut down these hate sites, though? What's the beginning of that? How do you get to where we can shut these people down? On the internet. Oh, no, 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 no. On the no, internet no, no. to be able oh, to no, communicate. Oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 Tommy. That's freedom of speech. Yeah. See, these There's people, no they record. got this, this, this country of set up. That, oh, mm-hmm. Freedom of speech. See, you can get a permit to walk down the street that I live on and pay taxes on for you to walk down that street and tell you how much you hate me. All right, uh, still more work to be done. That's all we can say. Uh, We're going to switch gears here and uh, get into the strawberry letter that's coming up next. The subject is common sense versus church sense. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time for the strawberry letter. Before we get to the letter, I got to let you know my Love Collection candles are out. They are available right now at loveshirleystrawberry.com. That's loveshirleystrawberry.com. We got the black love candles. We got the white love candle. Uh, Please go on loveshirleystrawberry.candle and pick yourself out one. I want to say thank you to everyone who's already ordered. Uh, A lot of people have gotten their orders. The reviews are good. Thank God the reviews are good. And I appreciate I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you very much. Child, the rest are, order mine. Yeah. Let me get get yeah. it going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Tony, when you get that case, remember that case you was gonna buy. Remember the case when you get the case. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give me a case. <laughs> I'm gonna a give case me a case of candles, I, nice. <laughs> <laughs> burn, Thank you guys. I, I appreciate. I burned some them. candles, so I get a case. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Love Shirley Strawberry.com is where you can get them. All right. Um, it is time now for today's strawberry letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, on work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to Steve Harvey FM.com. And you never know, we could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. See that? Could be your letter. Mm hmm. It could be. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. <clears throat> Strawberry letter. <laughs> clear your throat. <laughs> Let me clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, nephew. Subject, common sense versus church sense. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm close friends with a co-worker that is being misled by religion. She's 32 years old and single, but she acts like a 16-year-old ditzy girl all of a sudden. She has to check in with one of her three spiritual advisors when she gets to the office and when she's heading home. She usually talks to one of them on the phone while she's eating her lunch, too. In the past seven months, she's lost weight, let her hair grow out, and she stopped polishing her fingernails. She told me that nails are an attention grabber, and her church preaches that women should be more in the background. She has a churchy excuse for doing the craziest things. She pays her bills and car note and then gives whatever she's got Uh, whatever she's got left to the church and they take her grocery shopping. If she needs to shop, they give her a church credit card with a small spending limit. I told her that she's in a cult and she's slowly but surely getting brainwashed and she said it's all kingdom business that she's tending to. Uh, She said that her spiritual advisors call her body a temple and they love tapping into her energy to give them strength for the week. I asked if it was with all three, and she said it was the first time, but now it's one-on-one, so the connection can be greater. I used to burst out laughing, thinking she was uh, joking at first, but now it's just crazy. She's happier than I've ever seen her, so it must be beneficial to let the kingdom run through her weekly, but... What I don't want to happen is for her to lose her job over this church mess she's stuck in. I I can't get through to her, so should I try talking to her spiritual advisors? She has no common sense. 
Yeah, it, it sounds like she has no common sense. And I have to give you a compliment here. You are a very good friend. You're patient, you're caring. She needs someone like you in her life right now because this so-called religion she's in uh, that has no name or anything, it sounds like it has no foundation. And, and God is nowhere to be found in this. Um, I, and I say that because there's just too many ungodly things going on. For instance, uh, you asked her about having sex and she says, uh, first she had had it with the three men and then sex one-on-one -on -one with them to, what did she say? To tap into her energy so they could tap into her energy and have strength for the week. Uh, what religion is this really? Uh, you know, then she gives all her money to them after her bills and rent are paid. If she needs to go shopping, she can do that with the church credit card. And she doesn't know the difference between someone pimping her and using her and, and a real church. Obviously, uh, I agree wholeheartedly with you uh, 100% that uh, she's definitely brainwashed. She needs to be rescued and deprogrammed. ASAP. This is a cult. This is the, uh, has, you know, all the signs of a cult, but she can't see that. Um, and, and this is terrible. This is really terrible. Please stay her friend. Um, see if you can get some other people, I don't know, involved to maybe talk to her and get her out of this because she is definitely heading down the wrong path. Steve? This is clearly, this is some type of cult mess. This yeah. is not, you know, and once again, this is not, this is not what God is about. These are none of the requirements. He ain't got no requirement for you to have sex with three men so they can tap into your energy. They tapping into something. It ain't your energy, though. <laughs> you know, this whole letter, man, it's just, it's a sad letter, man, because I hate to see people who are lost get caught up because they don't know the way. And, you know, when you don't know the way, man, you can be misguided, misled easily, especially if you're looking for something. And somebody comes along at that moment where you're looking for something and anything sounds right to some people. And that's what happened in this case. She's 32 years old. She acts like a 16-year-old dizzy girl all of a sudden. She got to check in with one of her three spiritual advisors when she get to the office and when she going home. And she usually talks to one of them on the phone while she eating her lunch. It's been seven months now. The girl had lost weight. She let her hair grow out. She just stopped polishing her fingernails. And then she said the nails are an attention grabber and her church preaches that women should be more in the background. Lord, already what we talking about here. When this church gets started, the women should be more in the background. Man, come on, man. I mean, anyway, I got a few more things to say to you, but, you know, I don't know if it's going to help. Because the girl, I, I'd rather talk to the 32-year-old, but I got some news for her friends. So. Well, coming up at 23 minutes after the hour, we'll have part two of Steve's response. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, common sense versus church sense. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's um, very sad Strawberry Letters, uh, common sense versus church sense. Wow. See, this is a letter about a person who's lost, that's looking for something, and somebody saw her looking for something and filled in the blanks with some mess. Because that's all this is, is a mess. And I feel sorry for this little sister right here uh, that's got these three spiritual advisors that she talks to when she gets to the office, when she's heading home, uh, when she's eating her lunch. They done told her to, she done lost weight. She letting her hair grow out. She done stopped polishing her fingernails. Because she say nails are an intention grab and her church preaches that women should be more in the background. Uh, she's got these churchy excuses for doing the craziest thing. So here's what's happening. The girl pays her bills and her car note and then gives whatever she's got left to the church. They take her grocery shopping. If she needs to shop, they give her a church credit card with a small spending limit. Now, the girl told her that's a cult. That's exactly what it is. And she's getting brainwashed. But she said it's all kingdom business. Now, I don't want to say what I've heard that religion is, but I'll just leave that alone. She said it's all kingdom business that she's tending to. And she said her spiritual advisor called her body a temple. And they love tapping into her energy 
to give them strength for the week. Mm. Now, the girl asked her girlfriend, is that for sex? And she said, it's a lot greater than sex. See, they temple tapping, see. Mm. So that makes it greater than sex. We temple tapping. We tapping into your temple. We not just having sex. And then she asked her, was it with all three? And she said it was the first time, but now it's one-on-one. So the connection can be greater. Now the girl says she used to bust out laughing, thinking she was joking at first, but now it's just crazy. She's happier than I've ever seen her, so it must be beneficial to let the kingdom run through her weekly. But what I don't want to happen is for her to lose her job over this church mess she's stuck in. That This is not the most important concern, her losing her job. <laughs> the bigger problem is she's losing her soul. Damn your job. You can get another job. You got one soul. So she's been deceived by this trickery. Got the nerve to call it a church, but it's really a cult. I can't get through to her, so, so, so should I try talking to her spiritual advisors? Wow. Little girl, what are you going to say to them? Mm-hmm. They the ones started this mess. They're the ones that's perpetrating the mess. They're the ones that's pulling off the mess. They the ones that's is involved in the mess. What you going to say to them? She has no common sense. What I would do if I were you is I would report this institution. I really would. Now, people have the freedom of religion and all like that, but I would put them on notice. I, I mean, there are some things you could do to unravel this stuff because this, like, really is borderline really some dangerous stuff when you're turning over your entire check to a group and they're giving you a small church credit card with a limit on it. And once you start passing out church credit cards for them to buy stuff with collections, uh getting into the, some tax situation. I would report them. I would go down to somebody that's uh, some people that go and save and rescue people from groups like this, and I would get some help with it because something's wrong here. When they get through using and abusing this girl, they're going to throw her out. She's going to either run out of money or she's going to run out of attention, one of the two. So how does this religion explain to her having a family? How does this cult group explain to her about having a husband, children, or is she just group property now? Who are these men that get to decide who sleeps with this girl and how often they get to tap into her energy? This is the happiest she's ever been because she's been lost for so long. Now she thinks she found. But if this is your idea of being found, this is ridiculous right here. I would report it. I would find a group. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. But there are some help groups out there for anybody. Yeah. But they got government. You know, you can look into this right here, man. This don't have to be. I would try to help my friend that way. Get some attention, some eyeballs on this organization here so they don't just exist. And do you it know. to other people, yeah. A lot of eyeballs got put on this uh, Christian Scientology organization caused a lot of stuff, this Ron L. Hubbard business. A lot of eyeballs got put on a lot of other groups. And I'm not saying that's a cult or nothing. I'm not. I'm just saying a lot of eyeballs got put on this group and a lot of changes came about and it's continuing to come about. I would look into that myself if I were you. This is hateful. Mm-hmm. I don't like this letter because I feel sorry for this 32-year-old girl. She was my daughter, somebody I know. I go up in there and whoop all the advisors ass. Yeah. Let's start right there. Yeah, this, this is awful. Yeah. Uh, it, it really we're is talking bad. now. Now yeah, we're talking. Tapping in the energy and tapping. all this here. Man, get out of here. Yeah. I'm, come, I'm tapping everybody when I get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it'll be a different kind of tapping. No. Your turn. <laughs> Brother yeah. Steve, we pop. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, leave us your comments on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram at Steve Harvey. FM and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up uh, at 46 minutes after the hour, we'll have some sports talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is that time. It is time for Junior and sports talk. Hey, Junior, what you got? Uh, thank you, Shirley. Uh, listen, mm-hmm. um, Tommy, man, you know, we just had Crump on. And um, I just got to thinking about it. Uh, you were there. 
what role could an athlete play today with what's going on with situations like in Buffalo? Because I know when y'all was coming up, man, in the 60s, you had Jim Brown, you had Muhammad Ali, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You had people like that who were prominent athletes. Who stepped up. Who stepped up mm. for situations such as these when social injustice were, were happening. Like, what role could they do today with everything that's going on, like like in Buffalo? Well, I mean, in actuality, man, they're doing a really good job of it, I think. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think there's a lot of athletes out there, man, that use their voice, man, for voting and all like this right here. Uh, so I'm, I'm like, I've been very, very pleased with the way these LeBron. young men and young women yeah, have LeBron. behaved on a lot of social issues. And so I just think, man, that we that's not our problem. I think there's enough athletes who have stepped up for different causes. You know, even Colin Kaepernick with the kneeling, you know. Right. These young cats, man, when they get socially active, man, they're, they're a bad group of, of young dudes, man. So I'm, I know I'm, not, I'm an old person on, on, older person on the show, but I just got to tell you, man, I think that this generation is getting it right in terms of using their voice because they mm-hmm. want to shut them down. But these young cats is out here, man, using their voice to bring about change. A lot of rap artists are doing it. Especially when it came to voting, uh, right. that kid Yellowtail that came out with that uh, whole thing about voting and everything, I thought that was slick. You know, a lot of people are using their voice, so I don't think that's a problem today. Right. I really don't. Now, back in the day, it was more prevalent because we were in the height of civil rights. I mean, we was just trying to be able to drink out of damn water fountain and go to the bathroom and quit getting our ass whipped for sitting at lunch counters. You know what yeah. I mean? So it was yeah. it was bigger, you know, mm-hmm. uh, back then and more, and it was and it was a lot more dangerous to speak mm-hmm. out then. But yeah. I do want to say that I think that they are on point. I think these young people today are on point, and I don't think that's our problem. Our no. problem is much greater. Our problem is uh, the conservative platform. Our problem is white supremacy. Our yeah. problem is the freedom to do and say what you want to say. Uh, you can get a permit to walk down a black person's street to tell them you hate them. Yeah. So that's a lot of stuff. We got the wrong judges in place because we're not getting the right ones in place. And so we not vote. We got to vote. Right. That's it. Yeah. But that's we it. have to vote on all the elections, not just president. Mm-hmm. And there's a big like one coming up a, Tuesday. A Thank you. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, um, here's a question. Wow. Um, would you live on an old slave plantation? We'll talk about that. Answer that question right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. Picture this. All right. Imagine you just bought a house and you find out that it, it, it used to be a slave plantation. All right. Air Force veteran Fred Miller bought a large country home in Southern Virginia and found out recently that his 10 and a half acres of land was once part of a 1300 acre plantation. Miller worked with a local genealogy researcher to learn about his family history and connection to what was once the Miller plantation. He was featured on 60 Minutes with Leslie Stahl and uh, he worked around the abandoned slave cemetery on the park. He walked around the abandoned a slave cemetery on the property and counted eight tombstones there and pointed out a lot more. He has plans to restore the quarters now where enslaved people lived on the property to educate others on the history of slavery. He remarked that he hopes his great great grandmother is somehow looking down from heaven and finally cracking a beautiful smile. Mm. Interesting, huh? So he bought yes. the plantation that his his family, you know, worse once worked on, and I mean, has plans to restore it um, and, and I mean, teach think, people about slavery. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's a power move. Myself, yeah. I mm-hmm. commend him. You know, here's where you enslave my people. Now I'm buying it. How about mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Now I'm not gonna let anybody forget what you did to him. So I'm gonna restore it so I can teach the message. That's that's. That, that's 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 power to me. I get it. Yeah. I appreciate what the brother. Would you is, would like you it. live there though? Yep. That's I mean, question. I understand the restoring live. it, but would you live there on that property? Well, I don't. Um, 
I think I live down the street from it, dog. I don't think I'm gonna really be on the plantation. I'm, I'm, a, I'm. A, I can own it and restore it and have it, you know, built up like a museum. You can come see it and all that. But I yeah. don't be a little further down the way, though. You live, you live saying. on Smith Street. You're not going. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, 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 not Miller Plantation. Not Miller. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, ain't it all plantation? Uh huh. <laughs> Hello. Well, well, now we you said something. Now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you think about it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, but just imagine him walking around, you know, the property and imagining what went before him what happened you know his great great grandmother he said in heaven now she was there you know just all that history all that history and stuff it, it really interesting story yeah I like it about Air Force veteran like Fred it. Miller yeah I think it's a great idea yeah mm-hmm. yeah Whew. yeah some heavy times we live right. in right yeah Woo. I mean <laughs> <laughs> something this yeah, week this... has been really heavy for us, man. Yeah, it really, really has. And and so far, no resolve as far as what's going on in Brooklyn. Um, I don't know how that's going to turn out. Buffalo. In, Brooklyn, in Buffalo. Buffalo. And, and but I said Brooklyn. I meant Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Right. I said, what happened in Brooklyn? I didn't know. Something happened in Brooklyn, too? What happened in Brooklyn? You were thinking New York and I meant Buffalo. Yeah. yeah. Buffalo. I meant Buffalo. Yeah. Nothing yeah. happened in Brooklyn. <laughs> Huh, man. But yeah. Man. Mm-hmm. It's just uh... so sad. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I, I don't know, Tommy. Uh talking about living on the plantation. That that is an interesting question. Could you do that? And, and would no. you do that? No. You know? If I find the Miles plantation, I'm not living on it. I'm just telling you mm-hmm. I'm not living on You're it. You're just gonna restore it and make it historical and teach I'll do about all it. that. Now, uh-huh. if you want to live on the Harvey Plantation, I'm going to let him do that. You going on back to Virginia and stay on the Harvey Plantation. I'm not doing it. He didn't say he would. <laughs> what, Steve? What's uh, that what, look uh, for? What, what Harvey Plantation your ass talking about? Because <laughs> you didn't know I, about it. You didn't, you didn't, yeah, <laughs> I'll buy it and ball it out. I tell you what, if I find it, I'll buy it and ball it out. <laughs> Turn it into a big-ass basketball court or something. I'll tell you what. <laughs> It ain't gonna be no house. It'll be a rec center. It'll be something for the kids. I like that though. All right. All right. We're moving on, guys. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, a two year old toddler had an extreme case of the munchies and ordered. 31 cheeseburgers from McDonald's. Did you guys hear that? Two years old and ordering 31 cheeseburgers, McDonald's cheeseburgers from DoorDash, okay? (laughs) From the DoorDash app. These kids are geniuses Uh, and had them delivered to his home. Kelsey Burkhalter Golden was stunned when she received an unexpected delivery with a guy holding a big bag of burgers. She jokingly described it on Facebook, uh, saying, apparently my two-year-old knows how to order from DoorDash. Uh, She also shared a picture of her two-year-old son sitting on a table eating a cheeseburger next to a mound of 30 remaining McDonald's cheeseburgers. The total amount was $91.70, and the kid was nice enough. He was so sweet. He was nice enough to include include a $16 tip for the DoorDash driver. <laughs> it's a two-year-old kid. Yeah, he, he, a baby. He's he going he to be big, though. He eat all them burgers now. He can't eat all them burgers. Delicious. <laughs> all them burgers. Man, I'm talking about the whooping I'd get for ordering 31 cheeseburgers. Boy, a $16 tip. $16 tip, right. I'd be, I'd be vegan. <laughs> after that, after yeah, that. I'd be vegan. The youngest vegan but, I ever. mean, yeah, just the genius of this two-year-old to do that. I mean, mm. the order from DoorDash, leave hey. a tip, all of that. Yeah. I love Pretty it. genius. All right. Uh, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather have a gold tooth in the front of your mouth 
Or would you rather have a missing tooth in the front? Which one? Gold or just blank? No, nah, you got to go and give me that gold. I, got I can't have that hole. I can't have that hole in my head. Yeah, I'm talking about no. open, yeah. open face, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a gold tooth. I can explain the gold tooth. We can get some yeah. jokes going. Uh-huh. That hole in your head, though? Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Yeah, go for the gold. Psst. Go for the gold. Every goal. time you talk, you whistle. <laughs> You got a little spot. <laughs> I don't seem to understand. <laughs> so what you, so what you thinking at? It's what, what you what? <laughs> it's rough. Oh. It's rough. <laughs> All right. Yep. Would you rather take a vow of silence or a vow of celibacy? I think we know the answer to this. Quiet. Hey, silence. Wait a minute. For how long? Silence. I guess forever. Just for however long. Just period. We just quiet the so rest we'll of our We'll say a year. We'll say a year. How about that? Take a bow of silence for a year. Or I'm going to have so much notebook paper and a pen. I'm going to be writing down so much stuff. <laughs> I'm going to do a lot of texting. I'm going to text your ass to death. Nah. nah I'm going I'm, I'm to be celibate for a year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got way too much I got to talk about. <laughs> I got to get these checks coming up. You can't there. hold it in. Damn this. You can't. Well, that's your life, huh? You can't do fantasy. Dog, it's nowhere in hell. I can be quiet for a year. I'll be out there yabbing ass now. Let him mess Please. up your money. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave all these checks on the table sitting here trying to, so we can have some sex, man. Be quiet. Get over here and cut these movies on. Get in that room cut that light out. I'll be fine. <laughs> I'll be fine. I'll be talking again. Yeah. For the year. <laughs> All right, would you rather have a partner that just knows everything or would you rather have an unintelligent partner? Which one? Oh, me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what, Kier? Yeah, yeah. yeah Junior? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her ass he wants somebody with low she self-esteem that he can build up. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to have to explain her everywhere we go, Shirley. I'm just going to have to explain her. Well, she can't well I'm everything. just going to say it on behalf of uh, myself and Tommy and every <laughs> other married man. If you have a wife, you already married to somebody. Think they know every damn thing. That's right. Thing. That's notice right. we that's notice that's we didn't that's answer. That's that's answer. That's notice we didn't answer. We already got somebody. That's Man, that's if you not, married, we you already answer. live with a woman that thinks she know every damn thing. Got the answer for everything. But what did I say though? I heard you, ass, and you was wrong about that too. Oh, but we gonna do it though, just for peace. <laughs> Your peace is important. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, that's today's round of Would You Rather. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Coming up, it is our last break of the day of the week, as a matter of fact. And we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, guys, our last break of the day on this Friday. It's been a week, but we got through it. Thank the good Lord. It's been a long Amen. week. Yeah, Woo. it's been a week. It has. It really has. A lot um, has been going on. But birthday yeah, boy, so it was your so birthday much. this week. Yep. Yeah, yeah he's man. really going to celebrate yeah. this one uh-huh. And he's celebrating 55. by wearing tank tops. He's 55. Yeah, what is that? He's tripping. It's with his tank <laughs> Two his days in. Out. He on Zoom with his shoulders out. That means he's really yeah, scared me a little bit. <laughs> the ladies are all covered up. And nephews yeah, we like. all in here. He out here got his shoulders out. Oh, got these little straps showing and stuff. That's, that's, out, man. That's, just a, that's just the first shirt you grab. That's all. That's all that is. You put some on sexy. and go to work. You know? Sun's out, when you come out. to... When you come to Zoom work, you just grab whatever over the hey, this is, let me just put this on. Yeah. Zoom work. <laughs> Zoom work. All right, guys, any questions on the way out you today? You know what, Steve, I was thinking, um, you have any advice, you know, based on our CLO questions earlier, uh, these young women, um, some, some of them, especially the single ones, are kind of struggling, you know, meeting good men, good guys. Any advice to single women, young single women, about where to meet, how to meet young single men? And, well, there, um, there is no advice about that because you don't know where. There's no place mm-hmm. you can go and meet guys, your soulmate and all like this. Here's the problem today that I found well, discussing okay. with women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The problem is women keep telling me the same thing 
Steve, you don't understand. This is how men are today. Mm. All these young men talk this way, act this way, and treat us this mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right, let's accept that that's the statement. Let's okay. accept that that's the truth. What's the counter to that? Mm-hmm. The counter to that, young ladies, is you don't have to accept any of that behavior. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you should not accept or reward bad behavior to yourself. Mm-hmm. If a guy mm-hmm. like, like you know, I mean, you know, like earlier when you played that thing where that guy had took that girl out to dinner, I mean, lunch yeah, or whatever, yeah. and uh-huh. then wanted to take her home, and then right. she said she wasn't going home, and he said, well, you can walk home. And she mm-hmm. said, are you kidding me? And he said, well, I spent the whole day with you, and obviously I'm attracted to you. And if right. you don't want to go home, you can go home. I ain't burning no gas taking you home. Mm-hmm. That's what's out there today. But the counter to that is you don't have to accept that. Because mm-hmm. a man will treat you as you demand. If you demand to be treated the right way, a man will do that. If he refuses to do that, move on. Move on. So stop. Right. right, Stop the feeling that this is how men are. So what? But you know what? Don't you think there's a certain amount of pressure on on single women to have a man, to get married? You know, and, and that's to me what causes them sometimes to act desperate you know and all of that yeah you know they right uh they settle for guys you know that are beneath them or 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 and they know they could do much better guys that they don't deserve that don't treat them well okay then if that's the case let me ask you something so Mm -hmm. you want to sign up for a lifetime with this behavior in your act of desperation and wanting so desperately to be in a relationship to have a family, to be married, you're going to accept what this man puts down and offers to you, and you want to make a lifetime commitment to that? I don't think so. No. I, I, I yeah. don't think so. You, Who signs up for misery knowing it's going to be miserable? If you're in a relationship that's not good or healthy for you right now, getting married ain't going to change that. Right, right. But you know, some 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 women have the thing, you know, I'll get Mr. Right now. He might not be Mr. Right, but he's Mr. Right now. And, you know, and all of that. I mean, you know, it's yeah, just well, different. It's well, just the different prob- now. The we problem were. with Mr. Right now is tomorrow's coming. Mm-hmm. So now what he going to be then? Mm-hmm. Because Wall. tomorrow comes. <laughs> so he might be Mr. Right now. But mm-hmm. tomorrow when he get here, what, what he finna be? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I hate to just sound so matter of fact or, or use 65 years of wisdom and common sense, but you don't get it unless somebody gives it to you. Right. And I'm sorry it's not the way you think because you're 30 and you don't have the years or experience that I have. But unless someone tells you the truth, how do you know the truth? Now, the only other way is to go through the experiences yourself and discover the truth. But if somebody could tell you, instead of you having to experience it, don't that make better sense to you? Don't touch that curling iron, it's hot. Okay, so you don't want to do that? So you want to grab the curling iron. Now, guess Mm -hmm. what? Got burned. Now Mm -hmm. you know it's hot. Yeah. So what I just try to do is offer it to women and hopefully you'll accept it. Now listen to me. It's difficult explaining these ways that men are to women. So sometimes you gotta hit your, hit your head up against the wall. Yeah. Now yeah, I'll tell it to you, you ain't gotta believe me, but I do know men. Mm-hmm. And you could go about it another way and I really feel for women like that, but my suggestion in closing for women is up your standards, do not lower your standards, do not accept and reward bad behavior. You deserve better. You can get better. And I got news for you. There is better. Period. Amen. To hell with him. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And that mistreatment of you as a human being. You only right. got to do that. Yes. I'd rather be by myself and happy than with somebody else and miserable. And miserable. Those That's are right. my yeah. closing remarks today. Talk to God today, y'all. He'd love to hear from you. You feel me? See you tomorrow. Well, see you Monday.